to What's Cooking America. Today my sister and I are going to make jam for our first time. So you'll have to bear with us. We're going to make raspberry jam. We have all the equipment set out, so we'll just go through what we have. At the farmer's market, we picked up some fresh picked raspberries. It's always better to use the freshest fruit in season. We've got our jars that we have washed and sanitized. We've also sanitized and washed all the rings and the lids, and we're also going to boil that later before we get started. We've got our jar lifter that we'll use. We've also got some cold water and a spoon ready to go to test the jelly to make sure it's set later. We have a funnel to um, help us pour the jam into the jars. And then we also have a sieve because with bat raspberries, they have a lot of seeds we're going to try to push the berries through that to remove as many seeds as we can and then we have a masher to help us um, push the berries through. We also have our large canning pot and if you look inside we're working on boiling the water and we have the racks in there. It's a standing rack so the jars don't touch the bottom of the pot and so it's going to take a while to get this to a rolling boil. We have our water in a smaller pot ready, it's getting for hot water, getting ready to boil. We've got our sugar right over here that we are ready to add when it's time. We've got our pectin for the jelly. We also have butter that we'll use later if we need to help reduce the foam. And that is our equipment. Here, you always want to use firm ripe fruit that's freshly picked. It's going to give you the best flavor and it will um, help set the jams better. If you get fruit that's overripe, like there might be a couple squish pieces in there, that will make the jam a soft set. And then underripe fruit is going to make the jam have a really firm set. It's also important to buy um, brand new uh, jars um, you can use older ones, but you want to make sure that they're sanitized really good and clean. But always buy, um, you can keep the lid rings and reuse those and sanitize them. But always, you always want to buy new um, flat jar lids whenever you're canning. Don't reuse those. Throw the old ones away, buy brand new ones, and get these sanitized to use. So the next step we want to talk about will be very important to follow the ingredients exactly. We want to use a leveling knife to get this as level as possible when you're measuring your sugar. And then if you're going to do fruits, um, use a liquid or glass container with a spout to make sure you're getting the fruits measured exactly. Five cups of raspberries and seven cups of sugar in the recipe and that will yield nine cups of raspberry jam when we're finished. So you want to take one cup at a time. So I've got a cup of raspberries measured here and we're going to mash this first with our potato masher. So we're just going to get it all smushed. Oh look at that. The seeds are coming up. After you're finished smashing each cup of raspberries, you're going to then want to drop it into the sieve so we can push the berries through to remove as much seeds as possible. It's also important to remember that you don't want to double your recipe. You only want to make one batch at a time. While we're working still on crushing the raspberries to remove the seeds, we discovered that this is kind of a long process, so we decided that we're going to go ahead and crush all the berries and sieve them through, and then we will measure out one batch at a time when we make the preserves. So we are about done um, running the raspberries through the sieve. We've removed the seeds from about half of the um, raspberry crushed puree and my sister and I talked about it and we decided that we really like some seeds in our jam so the remaining uh, two or three pints we're going to go ahead and just put the crushed fruit in without taking the seeds out. We just finished straining out all of our raspberries now we're going to prepare the rest of our ingredients. 
Uh, so we're doing the sugar. We, we did first, to help the sugar dissolve faster in the cooking process, is we preheated the sugar in 250 degree oven for 15 minutes. Again, that's going to help it dissolve faster. I'm just measuring out the last of the sugar. We want seven cups in this recipe, so I've done six so far. This is the seventh cup that I'm adding. Now we're going to add in our berries. So we've measured out five cups of berries. We have the pan heated to a medium high. So we've got all five cups in. Then we're going to add one box of pectin. And we want to get this stirring. And we want to continuously stir and get this to reach a rolling boil that continuously boils even when we're stirring. We have the raspberries and the pectin all mixed together. Now we're going to add a half teaspoon of butter to the mixture. This will help reduce the foaming. We're ready to add the sugar. So we want to add the sugar quickly and stir it in and get it all dissolved. Stir. When we mix the sugar all in and the mixture comes back to a rolling boil, we want to set the timer for one minute exactly to keep this cooking before we start jarring it. Raspberries and sugar are at a full rolling boil. We've set the timer to let this boil for one full minute. Be careful because the raspberry preserves are hot. You want to ladle quickly into the prepared jars. Fill the jars one eighth of an inch from the top. And then be sure to wipe the jar rim, both on the outside, carefully removing any of the raspberry um, preserves, and also clean the inside nice, nicely as well. This is so that nothing gets under the, the rim of the jar. You want to take the um, lid from the hot water bath and place it quickly on top of the jar. And then screw the band tightly around and you have the jar ready to go and now we'll place, get ready to place it in the canner. We've got our water bath in the canning pot at a hot boiling simmer. Well it's not quite boiling and now we're going to lower in the jars into our water bath. We want to make sure that there's at least one to two inches covering the tops of the jar. We have all our jars in, now I'm going to cover it with a lid. I'm going to bring the water to a gentle boil and let it process for 10 minutes. Now we're ready to remove them. We're going to leave them sitting here on a towel to cool for 24 hours. As the jars cool, you'll start to hear popping sounds occasionally as the lids seal down. After they cool, you want to check the seals by pressing the middle of the lid with the finger. If the lid springs back, then the lid is not sealed and you'll have to refrigerate that jar and eat it immediately. Well, we're all done. We hope you enjoyed learning how to make raspberry jam with us in our first adventure into canning. Please check out this recipe and others at www.whatscookingamerica.com. Have a great day.